Hi dears, once again I welcome you to my YouTube channel, English Classes at Radhika Rinesh. Today we are going to learn about a very effective or a very important topic that is effective presentation software for education. We know that all educators, trainers, businessmen needed to make PPTs. Effective PPTs are very important in, the, in their career in order to success. PPT presentation or PPT making is very important nowadays. In the coming slides, we have to analyze uh, what are the things sh uh, should be cared while preparing and presenting PPTs. Which are the effective presentation software? So let's have a look. Uh, some of them are very familiar to you. That is PowerPoint. PowerPoint presentation is very important. That is PPT. Then Google Slides are there in your laptop. You can uh, find out these Google Slides. Then Prezi is another software, Canva. Uh, I think you will be very familiar regarding Canva. Keynote is another uh, software uh, for making PPTs. So these are the main softwares which help us to make PPTs. While you are presenting a PPT, some of the elements should be cared. The first one is visual elements. While you are presenting uh, your PPT, uh, your PPT or your slides will be visible to the audience. So it should be of high quality images and graphics. You should have to add or you should have to incorporate high quality images and graphics in your PPT. Then only it will attract the audience. Consistent layout and design. Uh, apart from the blackboard presentation, blackboard presentation means while you are uh, teaching a lesson by using a blackboard and a white chalk. Apart from this, you can uh, design your PPT as uh, you want to or as you wish to. So uh, you are very free uh, in making PPTs. Appropriate font sizes and styles. You can increase the font size and the style of uh, uh, the writing, that is the font style can be different in different PPTs and uh, uh, you can use different styles and font sizes. Limited bullet point, uh, points and text. It is better to use uh, uh, the text as bullet points rather than explanations because you want to explain the bullet points before the audience. Otherwise, uh, the audience will begin to read the text uh, that you are uh, written in your PPT. It will uh, make them getting bored. So uh, while you are preparing, while you are writing a PPT, uh, only use bullet points in the PPTs. The next ideal characteristics of a PPT presentation is the interactivity. While you are uh, presenting a PPT in front of a group of audience, you are interacting them with your presentation, your PPT, right? So you can use some uh, kinds of uh, uh, visual images uh, like animations and transitions. Uh, while you are using, you should have to use it wisely. Uh, apt animations or animation videos uh, can also be incorporated if it is needed. Hyperlinks to additional resources. You can uh, copy paste the hyperlinks. If you want to uh, explain that, you can uh, just press that hyperlink and you can go to that particular uh, page, web page. Uh, if the uh, system is in, uh, connected to the internet. Then multimedia content like videos, audio clips can be incorporated. That is by this hyperlinks, you can connect uh, some videos, YouTube videos are available while you are uh, accessing into uh, by hyperlinks. Then interactive polls or quizzes. Then you can send uh, polls and quizzes uh, that is you can uh, send uh, you can uh, that is you can incorporate some QR codes or something and uh, and uh, behind that you uh, can share uh, Google Sheets 
to the audience while scanning your qr code these google sheets will be available to uh, the audience and they can uh, mark their uh, feedbacks or something uh, so all these things are available while you are preparing a ppt if you are incorporated all these things in your ppt let's analyze which are the best practices for educational presentations keep it concise that is uh, 10 to 15 slides are favorable number of uh, slides uh, it should not be too many uh, it should not be exceed uh, uh, 15 slides that is uh, that is the audience will get bored if you are presenting 30 or 30 plus uh, slides in front of them so the uh, concise or the uh, apt number of slides in your ppt presentation uh, is 10 to 15 use accessibility features that is alternative text like um, uh, and you should have to think that uh, your audience uh, will be of heterogeneous uh, some visually impaired people will be there some uh, hearing impaired people will be there so you should your ppt should be made for all of them uh, for uh, hearing impaired people you can use uh, subtitles and for uh visually impaired or visually challenging people you can use voices so all these things will help the audience to uh, understand your ppt or your presentation very well the practice before presenting ensure compatibility across devices and platforms um before the presentation or before the uh, presentation in front of a mass audience you have to present it by your own practicing is very important before presenting a ppt uh, because you want to compete yourself uh, with others in order to become a competent uh, presenter or a uh, orator or a trainer or an educator you want to practice it uh, many times before Uh, the original presentation creating effective educational presentations so by choosing the right software and incorporating ideal characteristics you can create engaging and effective educational presentations that support student learning we know that why an educator is uh, making a ppt to uh, his or her students in order to interact with them in order to teach them or in order to making the teaching learning process more interesting right so by incorporating all these elements all these visually interactive elements into your ppt you can make it more effective and uh, with the assistance of technology you can make your teaching learning process wonderful okay hope you have understood this video don't forget to write down notes while you are listening to the video okay thank you bye bye